Have you ever made an offer on a house only to find out that you got outbid? What do you mean they accepted all the other offers except mine, sir? Have you wondered, what's the secret to getting your offer accepted? Well, I'm going to share with you my 30 years experience of how you can make better offers and get your offer accepted. Woohoo! It's a happy occasion. We're still in that stupid damn demic and the real estate market is hot because of low inventory and the lowest interest, interest rates ever. They're like in the twos and threes fixed. Hey, remember like last March when you're trying to buy toilet paper? Well, that's what the real estate market is like because there's a lot of buyers and there's uh, not a lot of TP. That's um, top properties. If you want to buy a house in this market, you got to be smart. Otherwise, you're going to waste a lot of your time and you're going to write a lot of offers and you're never going to get accepted and you're going to be super frustrated. We're going to go really fast, so pay attention. What? Number one, first you have to understand what the temperature of the real estate market is currently in your area. Is it hot or not? Is it a seller's market? Is it a buyer's market? Or is it neutral? And if it's a buyer's market where there's an oversupply of inventory and average days on market are like 90 days on market plus, then that's a buyer's market and that's totally different than the market we're currently in, which is a seller's market. A seller's market like we're currently in, there's usually a low supply of inventory and there's a lot more buyers and so you're going to get multiple offers and prices are going to get bid up higher than list price. This is muy importante. So if you don't know what the current market is or the current temperature of the market you're in, you can waste a ton of time or you can overpay if you're in a buyer's market. This video is about working in a hot seller's market where you're competing with other buyers just to buy a house. If your market is not like this, then do most of this anyways because it'll help you get the deal. So number two, if you're working with a real estate agent, discuss all this before you go looking at properties. You gotta make a plan and more on that later. Number three, if you're getting a loan to buy your house, then you need to get pre-approved prior to go looking at houses. What'd you say? But I have this prequal letter from the bank of nowhere. Yeah, no. Watch this video, it's about that. So you can right click it and then watch this after you watch that after you watch this. You know what I mean. So in that video, I go through the differences between a prequal and a pre-approval. And if you're not pre-approved, you're wasting your time because most sellers won't even consider your offer. But they might not tell you that. Just watch the video, brah. Number four, you gotta know what the typical contingencies are and their typical time frame. So all inspections are 17 days from acceptance, appraisal 17 days from acceptance, and final approval is 21 days from acceptance. Okay, so seven, 14, 12, Number five, consider shortening those time frames to make your offer stand out. For a seller, shorter time frame is better than longer. But you need to talk with your lender first before you do any of that because you need to know if you can do a shorter appraisal time or you can close earlier than a typical, say, 30, 45 day escrow. Do that first. All right, number six. If there's multiple offers, you need to make a strong enough offer that the seller will counter you. So most sellers only counter like the top two or three offers that they get. So if you're not in that pile, then you're wasting your time. Does that make sense? But you wanna make that short list and just remember that other buyers are doing the same exact thing. And so if this house has been on the market for less than 20 days, let's say, don't be surprised if it goes over a list price. Don't be surprised because that's what's going on. Stop. I know. I know you don't want to hear that. I know what you've been told, like your dad, your grandma, your neighbor, the guy in the plane, or Clark in accounting told you to always lowball and never pay full price and always bid less. Remember my point number one? Always know the current environment of the real estate market you're working in today before you start looking, right? And before you start making offers. I know this goes against everything you've ever been taught and everything you learned that you don't want to overpay and you love negotiating. I totally get it, you're normal. Offer a million less. Um, but it's listed at $1.2 million. That's right, that's what I read in that ebook online. Do it. <sighs> Everyone's a real estate expert. Everyone's a real estate expert. Except me, of course. Yet in this current seller's market, 
you don't have that kind of leverage if you're a buyer. You just don't. So you have to be prepared to do whatever it takes and what other, other buyers are doing to actually buy a house in this low interest rate, low inventory market environment. It's that simple. So don't overthink it and lower your expectations so you can you know, keep from losing out on deal over deal just because of dear old dad. Do it! <laughs> that seems kind of gruff. There's multiple offers. Be prepared for the highest and best clause. Oftentimes a seller will counter the strongest offers. Come back with your highest and best offer. Dude, highest is best, man. So they're just trying to see if they can bid it up, get people to short contingencies, shorten the close of escrow, and make the terms better for the seller. Okay? So this is where a lot of buyers lose out, right here. Either they lowball the price because of what dad told them, or they slowly want to negotiate upward in a highest and best situation. So you can actually win here if you really want the house. All right, where were we? Uh, what? Oh, seven. <laughs> you write a letter to the seller and tell them a short little story about your family. Well, if you have one, and if you're bringing them along. <laughs> so you don't have a family, send pictures of your pets. Tell them what you love about the house, about the neighborhood, about the schools, what you're excited about, what the kids are excited about, and you might even get picked to get into round two. Number eight. You can buy the house as is, with no repairs, to the seller, and the seller doesn't have to give you a credit or anything. So you get to do your inspection, you have your inspection period, and if there's just too many things to do, you can bail out of the contract and get your earnest deposit back. That's an another way you can get an offer accepted. Number nine is you can shorten your close of escrow. So shorter is better for a seller, and shortening the closing will help your offer stand out against other offers. Again, you gotta talk to your lender before you do any of that stuff and make sure you can shorten it so you don't risk potentially losing your earnest deposit because we don't wanna do that either. Also really important to use a strong local lender who can quickly close loans and has a track record of doing that. That means no internet lenders for you. They can't do anything on time. There's a few other ninja tricks that I am not sharing here, but I will use them when we work together because not everyone shares their secret weapons all the time, no? I cannot share them here. There's too many people watching. Number 10, an escalation clause. All right, this is tricky. It's an advanced tactic that even a lot of other agents don't understand, which boggles my mind, okay? It allows your purchase price to escalate, say 5,000, X thousand, over the maximum offer the seller accepts, up to a high price that you set beforehand. And it can't go over that price, so it's not just a blank check for a trillion, million, billion. You know what I'm saying? But that way, you can make your offer stand out. If they are gonna get this, they could probably get 5K more if they gave it to you. Super Ninja, you gotta understand it. And I usually have to explain it to real estate agents because they're like, what's that? Sorry. This can really help you win. Okay, number 11, you have to make a plan beforehand. This is your best strategy for winning. So watch this video up here, and once we're done with this one, and that'll tell you about how you got to make a plan. Proper logistics and knowledge. Plan, because nobody needs a plaque. What's a plaque? <laughs> if you have any questions about uh, any of this, my contact info is below or it's in my bio. Or you could go to www.meetdaryl.com, schedule a 15 minute virtual strategy session with me and we can talk about making a plan. Or you can just call me. My next video is going to be, what the heck is rhubarb? See ya. It's a happy occasion. I think I got stuff on my camera. <laughs> Sorry.